Bill Perkins is a trained electrical engineer who went to work in Wall Street and made a fortune trading energy. And because of his training as an engineer and his personal nature, he's driven to seek improvements in all aspects of his life. His book, Die With Zero, is a great description of his philosophy on how to maximize our life's fulfillment. Your life is the sum of your life experiences. Contrary to belief, this can be quantified and optimized. Full disclosure, there are a lot of things that I agree with in this book, but also things that I'm a bit on the fence about. So in the spirit of always growing our mind, let me share with you eight lessons I'm super excited to share about and two that I'm okay with, but not too excited about. And hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, where we learn to grow our wealth slow and steady. Lesson one from Die With Zero to maximize life fulfillment. In the spirit of maximization, maximize positive life experiences. If you think about it, life is really a sum of all of our experiences. The trip that we took with our best friend in college, watching our child's soccer game, the quiet cup of coffee we're having with our spouse. Without meaningful experiences, our life can quickly feel empty. However, that doesn't mean that experiences are all free. Not all, but many cost money. That trip we took in college, we had to buy a plane ticket, book a hotel room, and pay for food. Our child's soccer game, we have club fees, uniforms we have to buy, and the cost of gas to drive to the field. And even a cup of coffee made at home requires beans to grind and a machine to extract espresso. So we have to be thoughtful about the experience we choose to spend money on. The issue is, for many of us who might be obsessed about saving money for the future, we might be doing it at the expense of enjoying the present. They put off what they want to do until it's too late, saving money for experiences they will never enjoy. Bill talks about his friend John, who was diagnosed with a rare cancer at the young age of 35. No one suspected he had cancer, and it caught the whole family as a surprise. And John was heartbroken at the thought of everything he'd miss, from watching his children grow up to passing the years with his partner, Aaron. And sadly, despite the best efforts of his doctors, John died three months after his diagnosis. We will never know when death will come knocking at our doors. And for many of us, it is only in the face of death we suddenly start thinking, what am I doing? Why did I wait this long? Many of us go through life mindlessly as if we have all the time in the world. Bill challenges us to think about life in a more purposeful, deliberate manner. Am I pushing off what I want to do until it is too late? Constantly giving excuses that I'll have time later, but when and when later? I want you to plan for the future, but never in such a way that you forget to enjoy the present. Lesson two from Die With Zero to maximize life fulfillment. In the spirit of experiences, invest in them as early as possible. Bill talks about in his early 20s, when he was making about $18,000 a year as a screen clerk, he had a roommate named Jason, who decided to take about three months off from work to go on a backpacking trip to Europe. And because Jason didn't have the money, he had to actually borrow from a loan shark to fund the trip. Bill thought Jason was crazy for being so risky, both in borrowing money and also placing his career at a pause. But Jason was determined, so he went. And he had the experience of his lifetime. Jason went to London, Prague, Germany, Czech Republic, the Greek islands, and came back with amazing stories of what he's seen and the connections he made, all which made Bill quite envious. Years later, Bill, still remembering Jason's story, finally decided to go to Europe. But he was in his 30s when he decided to go. He couldn't retrace the same experience as Jason because he could no longer hang out with a bunch of 24-year-olds stay at hostels with 20 other guys, and because of more responsibilities, he couldn't just go off the grid for three months. Bottom line, Bill had missed a window for the experience that Jason had. There are life experiences that work best in certain phases of our lives. Like Jason, staying in cheap hotels, eating cheap food, and backpacking around Europe is probably best when we're young. And playing Legos and silly games with our kids is probably best when our kids are young and actually want to play those games with us. I doubt my son will be excited to make Legos with me when he's 20 years old. So invest in life experiences and do them as early as possible. The worst case scenario is that you might not like it, but at least you won't regret never having tried. The business of life is the acquisition of memories. In the end, that's all there is. In the spirit of investing smartly, I wanna introduce you to SoFi and their checking and high yield savings account. If you've been on the market for a great online banking option, I highly recommend you check out SoFi. Not only do they offer great rates, you pay no account fees, and you can earn up to $250 when you sign up and set up direct deposits. Of course, terms apply. Again, if you've been on the search for a great banking option, make sure to check out SoFi. And if you use my special link, which I'll have in the description below, you'll be supporting this channel as well, which I very much appreciate. Hopefully a win-win for all of us. All right, with that said, let's get back to the video. Lesson three from Die With Zero to Maximize Life Fulfillment. Give when you're alive. Give when you can see the impact that you're making. When you leave money to be given after your death to your kids or to a charity of your choice, you're leaving too much to chance. 
Your kids might be too old to take full advantage of the money, or the organization that you like to give money to doesn't look anything like what it does today after your death. Regardless of the amount you're passing on, it takes a great deal of luck for the money to arrive exactly when each of your recipients need the money most. However, if you don't wait until you're dead to leave money for your kids or your charity of choice, you can ideally give it to them when they most need it. To fund education, to buy their first house, or to build that water well. Bottom line, be more deliberate and intentional about our giving. And this means to do it when we're alive and not letting death decide for us. Lesson 4 from Die With Zero to Maximize Life Fulfillment Understand the relationship between time, money, and health. What I personally like to call the ultimate wealth trifecta. For most people, the three basics that people need to get the most of life are these. Health, free time, and money. The issue is that these things rarely come all together at once. That is unless we intentionally plan for it. When you're in your 20s, you have a lot of time and health. You don't have major family obligations or big management responsibilities at work. And most often, you're at your peak physical shape. Study of peak physical performance among Olympic and professional athletes showed that for sports like sprinting, which requires speed and power, athletes tend to peak in their mid-20s. Now, when you get to your 30s, you start to have some money. You're moving up the career ladder and entering your peak earning years. And up to your 50s and 60s, if you took care of your health, you're still relatively healthy. However, this is also a time when we have the greatest time crunch. This is a time window when we have the biggest responsibilities at work as well as at home. Being in management, raising kids, and juggling multiple priorities. Now, when you get to your later stages, you might have more money because you accumulated them in your peak earning years. Also, you might have more time because you may be retired. However, now the issue is health. And many spend a lot of their money trying to improve their health or at least fight disease because they want to extend the life they have on earth. So the challenge to solve is how to find the perfect balance between these three, which is of course easier said than done. But Bill lays out some good pointers to help us do this, which leads to the next lesson. Lesson five from Die With Zero to maximize life fulfillment. Health and time are more valuable than money. So if possible, trade money to gain better health and more time. Now, if we're struggling with money, this is a hard concept to wrap our head around. For many, we actually need to do the opposite. Trade time and our health to have money so we can have a roof over our head and food on the table. However, once we get to a point of having some money, Bill argues we should prioritize health and time above money. As regards to health, nothing has a greater effect on our ability to enjoy experiences at any age than our health. After a certain point, no amount of money can ever make up for very poor health. And this isn't just true in extreme health cases. Common health issues such as being overweight can really hamper our ability to enjoy certain experiences. Obesity impacts our bones and muscles and even our minds. We might want to go hiking with our young kids, but because we're not at our physical tip-top shape, we can't. We might have the goal to experience Southeast Asia over a three-month period, but it's hard because we don't have the stamina. No age group spends more on health than the elderly, whose healthcare spending aims to treat disease, manage pain, and prolong life. But instead of waiting until we're elderly, we should make earlier investments in health. Like my $2,000 squat rack, which I have parked literally right beyond my desk, so I have no excuse for not working out. And this goes with time as well. If you have the ability to, outsource as much as possible so you can buy back more time. Time is a lot more scarce and finite than your cash. For my wife and I, this is best reflected when we eat out with the kids as a family. Now, we try not to do this too often, but given our busy schedule, having someone else prepare food for us save us so much time. Time we can repurpose to have more meaningful conversations with each other and the kids. Lesson six from Die With Zero to maximize life fulfillment. Time bucket your life. We've all heard of the bucket list. Essentially, a single list of all the things we hope to do before we kick the bucket, so to speak. Now, the issue with this list is that we list everything without considering the time. We have climb Mount Everest right below Alaska Cruise without really thinking about what phase of our life would this experience be most optimal. While we can cruise Alaska after we're 75 years old, our window to climb Mount Everest is much narrower. Therefore, Bill introduces time buckets. Essentially, we draw a timeline of our life from now to estimated death, then divide it into intervals of five or 10 years, 30 to 40, or from 60 to 65. Then we think about what key experiences we want to have in each time bucket, essentially turning the bucket list into time buckets. In this way, we're taking a much more proactive approach to life. If we can facilitate experiences based on time buckets, then hopefully we're not sitting on the edge of our bed at the age of 75, regretting never having attempted Mount Everest because our window to when we could have done it passed. Lesson seven from Die With Zero to maximize life fulfillment. Know you're enough. Bill goes into the specifics of identifying our peak net worth date so we can spend it down on experiences while we can still extract a lot of enjoyment from them. Based on his research, this will be between age 45 and 60. So once you hit your peak net worth date, you should start spending it down to achieve maximum life fulfillment. Now, this is much harder to implement than how Bill lays out in the book, but I see where he's trying to go with this. 
The main takeaway is that we should look at life holistically. Money, time, and health all play a part in life fulfillment, so we shouldn't aim to grow our net worth indefinitely. What is the point of having all the money in the world, but we don't have the time and health to enjoy them? We can place a marker on the ground where we say this is enough, or come up with a number that we feel comfortable with. Bottom line, use resources, of course wisely, but use it to extract as many fulfilling experiences while we still can. Lesson 8 from Die With Zero to Maximize Life Fulfillment Take big risks, especially when you have little to lose. At the extreme, when the downside is very low or non-existent, as in the nothing lose case, and the upside is really high, it's actually riskier not to take the bold move. I think this is a very important concept, especially when we first approach our careers. When we're young, we're at the exploration phase. We don't know what we don't know. Thus, this is one of the best times to swing for the fences with our careers. Pursuing the most challenging jobs, joining a fledgling startup that is trying to flap its wings, taking a job that can take us to the other side of the world. And when you're young, you can afford to take a lot of risks because you have plenty of time to recover. Stumbling and falling are just signs that you're growing and making progress. But this doesn't mean that when we're older, we can't take risks. When you consider the worst case scenario, it might not be as bad as you might think. So take risks. Lesson 9 from Die With Zero to Maximize Life Fulfillment. And this is where I start to wrinkle my nose a bit with some of Bill's advice. Aim to die with zero. This really is the main argument that Bill is making with his book. Have the goal of dying with zero. Aim to spend all your money before you die. Enjoy life to the fullest with every dollar you have up to the point of your death. Essentially, optimal utility of every dollar you own. If you spend hours and hours of your life acquiring money and then die without spending all that money, then you needlessly wasted too many precious hours of your life. And those of us who are wary of spending because we're afraid of the unexpected, he does provide counter-arguments. On the whole, most people are very slow to spend on their assets. One third of all retirees actually increase their assets after retirement. And for the worst case scenarios, there are vehicles like government subsidized health insurance and long-term care insurance. Now I understand the argument that Bill is making here. It's like renting a car and prepaying for fuel. You don't get any money back if you return the car with extra fuel. So you might as well use it all up before you return the rental. In an optimal situation, your gas light is coming on as you're rolling into the rental lot. But the honest truth is that this not only requires some really good planning, but a lot of luck. To drive your rental exactly the right distance so you use up all the fuel, but not so much you don't have enough to drive back to the rental is really hard. What happens if you run into unexpected traffic, a car accident, or your gas gauge is slightly off? and you're stranded in the middle of the road without any gas. Not only is this super stressful, but you could end up spending more money in the end, needing to call a tow truck or paying the rental service more money because you're late with your return. So do I understand where Bill is going with his argument? And to his credit, he does say in the book that to die with exactly zero is impossible. But in my personal perspective, even getting close to is pretty hard. And I feel it's not practical and applicable to most people. My concern is that most people already don't save enough for retirement. So some people may walk away from this book believing the main lesson is YOLO. You only live once. Don't fret so much about saving and investing, spend today, and live for the life experiences, which would just worsen the problem of people not saving enough. There's just so much uncertainty to our lives and to our future. So I'm in the camp of saving more, even if that means I'm leaving some on the table when I die. For me, the feeling that I always have enough, enough to even leave some on the table when I die, gives me a sense of comfort. But that could just be me. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Do you want to aim to die with zero? Or are you more like me? Even if you leave some behind, that is fine because you derive comfort from having more than enough. Number 10 lesson from Die With Zero to maximize life fulfillment. Another one that I'm on the fence about. Actually, this one makes me cringe a bit. Bill recommends using annuities to help die with zero. First, he says to use a life expectancy calculator to estimate how long you will live. Bill lists out few specific ones like longevityillustrator.org and livingto100.com. Then he recommends exploring financial products like annuities. For those of you who aren't familiar with this product, let me explain. Buying an annuity means you give the insurance company a lump sum, say $500,000 at the age of 60. And in return, you get a guaranteed monthly payout. For example, $2,400 each month for the rest of your life. Now understand that you're relinquishing your principal forever to the insurance company. Now again, I understand where Bill is coming from because he thinks like an engineer. Engineers don't like waste and he's trying to approach life like an engineering problem. Calculate the estimated length of life and apply mechanisms to extract the maximum value from it. You should be focusing on maximizing your life enjoyment rather than on maximizing wealth. However, this is again where I have to disagree with Bill. Yes, I do want to maximize life enjoyment. And some of the tools that Bill mentioned can help us do that. But to me, there's just so much uncertainty to life that there's a limit to how much we can optimally plan out waste. Additionally, while for some people who are very risky, they might be able to continually find joy while they see their net worth decline with age, for those who are risk averse, seeing their net worth decline quickly could actually work against their life enjoyment. Rather, life stress-inducing. We're also different with different definition of what brings us joy. 
Additionally, there is so much uncertainty to what the future holds. Even if we can estimate exactly when we will die, what's to say there won't be some major political or cultural event that could upend our well laid out plan? Also, I personally am not a big fan of annuities because I don't like the idea of handing over all my money to an insurance company, entrusting my future livelihood to them. But you might feel differently after reading Bill's book. Thank you guys for watching. In the spirit of optimizing life, if you want to learn some tips to optimize your investment portfolio, please check out my video here. Until next time, all the best.